In 1966, the residents of a small town in West Virginia were stalked by an unknown creature with glowing red eyes. Was he real or just a figment of the imagination? And does recent photographic evidence suggest he may have returned? This week on Bedtime Stories, we retell the legend of the Mothman. Point Pleasant, West Virginia, a small town with a big history. Its population of just over 4,000 occupies an area of just three square miles. One would not think of it as a city, but in fact it is. A city surrounded by lush green countryside, bisected by the vast Ohio River and steeped in larger than life legend. As its name suggests, its character is quaint, peaceful, and above all, pleasant. On the surface at least, no one would ever suspect that it was home to one of the most unsettling ordeals of the last half century, one that still strikes fear into the hearts of many. During the latter half of the 1960s, reports began to surface of a mysterious and horrifying creature stalking residents on the outskirts and surrounding areas of town. Encounters with this entity were said to be so frightening that at least one person suffered from psychological trauma for many years after their experience. The first sighting of such occurred on the 12th of November 1966 when five gravediggers working in a local cemetery near Clendenin saw what they thought was a human being fly out of a group of trees nearby. They watched for about a minute as it swooped low over their heads and then took off into the distance. Two nights later, on the 14th, a resident of Salem, Newell Partridge, was at home watching television when he saw two red objects hovering over a field at the rear of his property. Upon investigating, he realised that the glowing objects were actually a pair of eyes, which belonged to a tall, dark figure. This figure was standing on the branch of a tree about a hundred metres away, when it promptly rose up into the air and flew away over the woods, letting out a blood-curdling scream as it went. His dog, a German shepherd named Bandit, took off in pursuit and was never seen again. The night after, on the 15th, two young married couples burst into the Mason County Sheriff's Office in a state of panic and distress. They were Mr. and Mrs. Roger Scarberry and Mr. and Mrs. Steve Mallet, and they had been on their way back from a double date, driving close to the TNT area of Point Pleasant, when they saw a tall grey figure stood next to the road. They reported that it looked like a man but bigger, possibly seven feet tall, and that it appeared to have a pair of wings folded behind its back. In front of it lay the carcass of a dog, the breed of which was never determined, but was later assumed to be that of Newell Partridge's German Shepherd. As they passed this strange looking figure, it rose into the air and proceeded to fly after the car. Mr. Scarberry, who was driving, sped up close to 100 miles per hour, 
but the creature was able to keep up, matching the speed of the vehicle. His wife said that it emitted a high pitched screech as it flew, and that it had huge red eyes, which glowed like a pair of car reflectors. As they entered the town, it broke off the chase and flew back in the direction of the TNT area. A press conference was held on the afternoon of the 16th, where the Scarberry and Mallet couples gave their accounts of the previous evening. Dr. Robert Smith, a wildlife expert, was also in attendance, and offered his explanation to the waiting media, saying that what the two couples had actually seen was an abnormally large crane, which had been blown out of its migration route. These reports would hit the local evening papers on the 16th of November, and word of the encounters spread through the town like wildfire. This, as with any kind of sensationalism, unfortunately invited many fabricated sightings from other so-called eyewitnesses. And from here on out, nearly all alleged encounters are subject to a much higher scrutiny. That's not to say that all of them are fictitious, however. One sighting in particular occurred on the evening of the 16th, at around the same time as the first local evening papers were being deposited in mailboxes. Mr. and Mrs. Raymond Walmsley, along with Marcella Bennett and her baby daughter, Tina, were on their way to visit the Thomas family, who lived on the outskirts of town. When they pulled up to the Thomas property, the car seemed to disturb something, as they were getting out of the vehicle, they were shocked to see a large grey figure, bigger than a man, rising up from the ground nearby, which they described as having terrible glowing red eyes. Marcella was so alarmed that she forgot she was carrying her baby daughter, and in her panic, actually dropped her. After collecting herself and her child, she ran to the Thomas home and was let in by one of their children. The creature shuffled after them, and continued to terrorise the household by peering in through the windows. By the time the police arrived, over half an hour later, it had of course vanished. But this wasn't the last Marcella would see of the Mothman. She also lived on the outskirts of Point Pleasant, near the TNT area, and claimed that after her initial encounter at the Thomas residence, the creature had visited her home on several other occasions, and that she often heard its blood-curdling scream in the dead of night. Marcella apparently suffered with nightmares and other mental health issues for many years after her ordeal. The TNT area of Point Pleasant would later become heavily associated with the Mothman. It is a large tract of land, dotted with small concrete igloos used during World War II to store ammunition. It is also adjacent to the 2,500 acre McClintock Wildlife Station, and the entire landscape is covered with dense forest, steep hills, and riddled with tunnels. The press would go on to claim that the area acted as a home for the creature during its time in Point Pleasant, with most of the sightings having occurred there. There were many more reported encounters towards the end of 1966, peaking especially in 1967, and during November of that year, the Silver River Bridge over the Ohio River collapsed, plunging a number of vehicles into the icy depths and killing 46 people in the process. Immediately after this, sightings of the Mothman ceased altogether leading many to believe that the creature was somehow responsible for this tragedy. That it was, in fact, a harbinger of death. So who, or rather what, was the Mothman? Was there any truth to the events that took place? Or was it all just an elaborate hoax, orchestrated with the sole intention of increasing tourism to a failing backwater town? Ideas have been varied, to say the least. Skeptics have largely agreed with Dr. Robert Smith's explanation, maintaining that the Mothman was nothing more than a very large bird, and this may well have been true. The Sandhill Crane, 
is a large species of bird, common in North America, which normally averages a height of around 4 foot, but is capable of growing up to 6 foot. It also has shocks of bright red feathers around its eyes, somewhat matching the descriptions given at the time of the sightings. However, eyewitnesses have taken great issue with this explanation, saying that what they saw was definitely not a bird, and that they would have known the difference. First of all, it would have to have been abnormally large in order to match the proportions given by those who encountered the strange being, seven foot tall in most cases. Secondly, the Mothman's eyes were said to glow red, and whilst owls exhibit eye shine when a light source is pointed in their direction, most other birds do not. By all accounts, the creature's eyes glowed red, even when no light source was pointing directly towards it. The high-pitched scream it emitted was also said to be far more human-like than bird-like, and Mr. Scarberry in particular would go on to question exactly what kind of bird could fly at over 100 miles per hour. And finally, whilst it might be plausible for one or two witnesses to misidentify a large bird, it would be highly improbable for so many people to have done so. This is, of course, if many of the eyewitness accounts are to be believed. Sightings dramatically increased after the Scarberry and Mallet accounts were published in the local papers, and it would only be prudent to assume that some, if not most of them, were completely fabricated to further inflame the situation. Even the Scarberry Mallet sighting is said to have a number of inconsistencies between how the story was originally reported to the police and what it later became in the press. For instance, other sources have it that the creature did not, in fact, fly after their car, but rather shuffled down the road in pursuit for a very short distance. With this in mind, we are once again at the mercy of speculation, and of this, there is no shortage. Tourism to the town experienced a noted increase in the wake of those first sightings, and of course, this has led a number of doubters to believe that the entire episode was a cleverly planned hoax engineered towards that end. However, the reason this story captured the imaginations of so many in the first place was the result of those first four encounters. These four sightings all happened over the course of as many days in locations that were many miles apart they were all strikingly similar, despite nothing being reported in the press during that time, and despite the fact that none of the witnesses knew each other. Add to this that the sheriff absolutely believed the Scarberries and Mallets, having known them for most of their lives, and witnessing firsthand how extremely upset and visibly shaken they were after their encounter. For this reason, many are prepared to give these accounts the benefit of the doubt. There could well have been an unknown cryptid stalking the countryside around Point Pleasant, and if this was indeed the case, what was its purpose, and where did it come from? One theory within the fringe community is that the Mothman is a symbol of impending doom. Completely unrelated to the Point Pleasant sightings, the same creature has allegedly been seen all over the world, and wherever it appears, tragedy soon follows. Indeed, many have likened the Mothman to the strange flying humanoids often witnessed in parts of South and Central America. The most popular theory amongst believers, though, is that the Mothman was actually extraterrestrial in origin. Sometime before the first Mothman sighting, a sewing machine salesman by the name of Woodrow Derenberger, driving along the I-77, not far from the area of Point Pleasant, encountered a UFO, which stopped his car dead in the road. A being exited the strange craft, sporting a huge, inhuman grin. This entity was said to have communicated with Derenberger telepathically, asking about the strange glow on the horizon not realising that it was the lights of a distant town. 
Derenberger reported that the individual referred to himself as Indrid Cold, a name which didn't mean anything to him at the time, but one which has gained much notoriety over the years. Many alleged alien abductees have reported meeting an Indrid Cold, otherwise known as the Grinning Man, which we will cover in another episode. Cold was said to have asked Derenberger many questions about the people and the surrounding areas, then thanked him and left in his strange craft. Less than two weeks later, the first sightings of the Mothman began to surface, and over time, links between the two entities have invariably been made. Not only that, but many UFOs and strange lights were witnessed in and around the town at the time the encounters were going on. Some residents even reported paranormal activity in their homes, which gradually abated after the sightings themselves had ceased. Even the famed men in black were said to have made an appearance in the town on a number of occasions. Whoever or whatever the Mothman was, there is no doubt that something strange was going on in that small city on the banks of the Ohio River during the late 1960s. Whether people were seeing a genuine cryptid or nothing more than a figment of somebody else's extraordinary imagination, we have to ask ourselves which is the more bizarre. A species yet to be discovered, of earthly origin or otherwise, or the length some people might go to in order to save their town. In closing, we have linked a picture which was taken near Point Pleasant on November the 20th, 2016, almost 30 years to the day after the first Mothman sighting occurred. And whilst this could be nothing more than a bird of prey clutching a snake in its talons, the question must be asked, could the Mothman have finally returned to Point Pleasant after all this time. Time.